Hello guys. Um, so welcome to week ten in class practice. As I'll be doing the recording for that, uh, today. Um, so let's just get into that. Um, uh, so week ten. Um, the data that we have is uh, it's country wise data. Um, and uh, we have. To countries from uh, different regions and their current health expenditure, uh, their GDP and their population in thousands. Um, and the data basically, um, it ranges from 2011 to 2020. Um, and uh, we have a bunch of countries uh, in, in our data set. Um, so yeah, um, so our main focus for this uh in last week would be regression and correlation um so let's get into the questions uh so you can read more about the data here um so we want to regress current health expenditures per capita on gdp per capita and population um so if you remember from our last um in class practice uh i showed you how to do the regression so we are going to do that again here um so for that you would need uh this uh, tool bag i'm sure that more, all of you have it downloaded because we used it for, we've been using it for the past couple of weeks so if you click on that and as you did in last uh class also you can um do the uh linear regression and you can use the linear regression here um actually you can also use the star plus um and it has uh Actually, it has multiple linear regression also, so I think it might be better. Um, so let's use that. So we do a new analysis, and then we can do go to regression and then multiple linear regression because we have multiple uh, columns. So we want to regress uh, current health expenditures, which is our dependent variable on GDP per capita and population. So our dependent variable is yeah. So we want to use the data source, uh, um, and that is our uh, D column D. That is our dependent variable, and then independent variable. We can. Yeah, so we can add both these columns here because we are regressing it on two different columns. So you can open this and add the uh, variables that we want. So we have two columns here, the population and gross domestic product. And we want our results to be It's going to run, might take a bit of time, but yeah, so we have the results here and uh, 
we are more um so we have the dependent variables and the uh, and our independent variables and the r values um and so we look at the uh look at the coefficients there's a bunch of other information that you might not be interested in uh so we, if we look at the uh coefficients here so your intercept coefficient is 142 this is our population coefficient and this is our gross domestic uh coefficient uh so these are the results uh for our regression and write the prediction equation so basically prediction equation is uh as i mentioned it's basically your y which is the independent variable into uh b naught which is the constant intercept and then b1 into x1 plus b2 into x2 um and so forth so and so forth if you have more variables then you add the co their coefficient so in this case you have two variables so if we look at the results here, a, a, this is the um, a, this is the equation that we have gotten from our. Uh, so this is the equation that we will be using. So current held expenditure is equal to one forty two coefficient plus the coefficient of population into population and coefficient of gross domestic product into gross domestic product. Uh, so this is the equation, right? Um, so interpret the constant slopes of GDP and population adjusted R square and 95% confidence interval. So constant is when GDP and population are all equal to zero. So constant occurs when all variables are zero. So the current health expenditures per capita are expected to be uh, $142. So if all if the population and GDP are zero, which is in this case, it's an impossible kind of scenario, but uh, we just interpret it that way. Um, and the GDP uh, and the coefficients of GDP and population. So when it's a coefficient of GDP, that means that holding all else constant. So holding the population constant, everything else constant. Every in dollar increase in GB GDP per capita, current health expenditure per capita is expected to increase by $0.06. Because in our equation, we can see here that current health expenditure is equal to this coefficient uh, and then the these two terms of right. So if we are holding all as constant, so then intercept stays there, and then uh, uh, the population you assume that it's constant, so it's not changing. So the only thing changing is GDP. So if you change it by one unit, if you put one unit one here, so that means current health expenditure is increasing by zero. So if you put two here then it means current health expenditure is increasing by 0 0.06 every time you add a GDP dollar into it. Um, and so similarly, population is the same thing. Um, holding all else constant. Um, for each thousand increase in population, and it is important to see what your uh, variable units are, because here, if you see in our data, the GDP is in uh, per per capita, so it's in uh, US dollar per capita. So every dollar increase per capita of GDP will increase the health expenditure per capita by this. Similarly, the population is already in thousands, right? So you will say that, so the regression assumes one unit of whatever units you have here in, of the data. So in this case, you already have the units in thousands. So that means that if you increase your population by 1000, because your units, basic unit is 1000 in the population, then current health expenditure per capita is expected to increase by 0 0.03 cents or these many dollars. Um, and adjusted R square, 66%, uh, 66.1% 66 of the variation in current health expenditure per capita is explained by GDP and population in a model. So as you remember, like R square value, uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, so this uh, R square value, it explains the variability in our dependent variable that is explained by the change in independent variable. So that is, uh, that 66.1% of it is explained. And then 95% confidence interval is 
that we are 95% confident that the true population coefficient for GDP per capita falls between 0 0.061 and um, uh, 0 0.0658. So in this case, if you go uh, to the results here, our 95% confidence interval here is, um, so you see the values here. Uh, these confidence interval values for GDP per capita and population. Um, and the other more appropriate uh, definition would be in this case that if you took um, 100 samples, then 95 samples, uh, and, and you then reg did regression on those 100 samples, uh, then 95% of those samples would yield uh, a GDP per capita value between this interval and then population uh, value with it, between this interval. Okay, uh, so using the regression results and the corresponding equation, what is the predicted current health expenditure for a country with a population of um, 10 million and GDP per capita of 1,000? So if you go here, you see this is the equation that we are using. And uh, if we use this equation, um, so you can say that this equation is our current health expenditure is equal to 142.24 plus uh, 0 0.06 into our GDP. So that GDP value was, uh, we assume that GDP is per capita of 1000, right? Um, so that is 1000. So we multiply this by 1,000. And our population is uh, 0 0.004 into 10 million. But remember that our population units are already in uh, 1,000. So we have to make sure that we use the correct units. So in this case, we are just going to give it 10,000. Um, 10,000 because the other 1,000 is already in the units. Uh, and so if you get this, so our answer is 206.24. And uh, we can also uh, use this. Um, so we can, uh, this is the estimate because you're rounding off these values, but if you want to get the exact, um, so let's shift it here. So if you want to do exact, then we can say, is equal to and here from the results we pick so this plus uh this into ten thousand which is our population plus uh this coefficient into our thousand GDP per capita right so this is your exact uh so do make sure that you know uh if the variable if the coefficients are very small then um round them accordingly and you know you might see like a little difference so make sure that you are using exact coefficients right so that's question number one okay calculate the variance inflation factor for your independent variables is there a high risk of multi-collinearity in your model? So basically, variable variance inflation factor uh, um, tells you about multi-collinearity. And the way you can do it is, if you go to the data here, uh, various uh, variation variance inflation factor is always uh, calculated between your independent variables. So in this case, our population and gross domestic product. So if you go here and you um, open this tool pack, uh, you will see this uh, correlation uh, tab here. Click on that and you give it the input uh, range. So the input range will be both of these columns. So you will select both these columns and go all the way down.
right so you will uh, select all both these columns uh, excel will know that you're talking about two different variables grouped by columns labels in first row and then we want our table here let's say we want to output it somewhere here so on the m so you will get this table this is going to give you the correlation values between two variables um and this is the this is the correlation between population and gross domestic but obviously between gross domestic and it's one and then population population one so this is the correlation value between our two variables right um and to then calculate the variance inflation factor um if you so i have this uh, table here uh, it's the same table so to calculate the variance inflation factor you can go here results and you can see uh, you can put the uh, equation um, uh, of variance inflation factor uh, and use the correlation value so if you look here the uh, the basically the uh, vif is uh, the value for v the equation for vif is one minus one over uh, the correlation coefficient square. So this is the uh, this is the equation. Um, and uh, sorry, uh, sorry, it's one over uh, one minus correlation. My bad. So this is the equation for variance inflation factor. Um, so this is the equation that you put here. So it's already calculated, but I do it again. One divided by uh, one, one divided by one minus um, this uh, square. Yeah. So this is the equation, right? And this is how you calculate the variance inflation factor. And um if you know from the lecture vs inflation factor is you know if you have it higher than 10 then there's an extremely high risk of multicollinearity from 5 to 10 it's moderately high risk and 0 5 is low risk so and if if it's high risk then you drop one of the independent variables because they're correlated to each other so they are affecting each other so you don't want both of them there so in this case because our risk is low so we are going to say that our risk is low of multicollinearity, and uh, yeah, we, uh, we we don't need to drop uh, any one of the variables. Right. Um, okay. So question number three, create binary variables to indicate the region of each country. So um, let's delete this. So if you look at the data here, our region has uh, five values africa americas asia pacific europe and middle east the the thing that is asking you to do is that you create uh binary variables of um uh, of from our data so if you go here let's I, i'm going to do it it's already here but i'm going to do it again um so let's just select all the data and copy paste it into our new sheet here and Page step here, and then what of that column does? So, what's it asking you to uh, do? Is basically uh, let's go to here. Yeah. So it's asking you to create a variable for each different region. And if that if the country is that in that region, that the variable would be one. And if the country is not in that region, then the variable would be like the value would be zero. So we have five uh, different uh, regions. So we have Africa. Uh, we have Middle East. We have Europe. Americas and Asia Pacific. Now, what you want to check is that if the value 
if the country is in that region, that specific region, let's say the country is in Africa. So here the country is in middle. Uh, uh, so if you want the country to be in Africa, then it will give a value of one. And if it's not in Africa, then it will give a value of zero. So this can be done easily with the if. So first we check a logical test. Is this value equal to Africa? Uh, and make sure you use the correct spelling and everything so that, you know, um, uh, Excel doesn't uh, run into errors. And if it is true, then give me one. And if it is false, then give me zero. So here we can see that Africa, this country is in Middle East, so it's not going to give you one. And it's going to give you one for countries which are um, in Africa. Oh, why isn't it giving it for this? Yeah, let me check Yeah, I think maybe something happened in my copying the data, but uh, let's try this again. Let's do this all the data right and then And then if this is equal to Africa, then one and otherwise zero. That's interesting. Um, even though it's matching, but uh, here it's Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's happening here. It should pick like whenever whenever it, I say Africa, it should match. Uh, maybe there's a space here. But I'm trying to delete that. Um, and it's not working. Let's do 
but that's this is not very efficient. Yeah, I think like there's there might be some um uh, might be some issue here. Let me check it. Right. Um. So, I was just checking something. I think there was a issue with um how the data was uh copied and pasted. So I just fixed that. Um. So if you look at the data here, um. So I just copy pasted the data again and uh made sure that everything matches. So if you copy paste the data from here. Um, so I have the data, all of it here. So I put Africa and then you can put other, uh, Middle East, Americas and Asia Pacific and Europe. So we're just checking for those countries. So if this is the Middle East, then we say, okay, if, uh, this is equal to Middle East, then let's give one, otherwise zero. And then you can just copy this, this down all the way. Um, similarly, uh, this is equal to Americas, give me one, otherwise zero. Pacific. So now we have created these binary variables from our uh, different regions and uh, whenever a country is in America's uh, it will give one in America's column, otherwise it will be zero. Um, and this is, uh, you might come across this a lot in um, in regression, whenever there are categorical variables, you might want to uh, create like these uh, encodings of, and you know, create like uh, encodings of these variables where you create a column for each of that, uh, of that value. So usually we are told in that tiny, tidy data that we shouldn't have values as columns and we shouldn't. The tidy data will always be in this. After you have this tidy data, you might want to convert it for the regression analysis only uh, into this sort. So yeah. Um, so once we have this, um, let's, so we have this. Um, so this is what the table should look like. And I have table here also, right? Um, so uh, run a new regression, including these binary variables in your model, which region category did Excel exclude as a reference group. Um, so if you go here and we have the multi, okay. So again, we'll pick the star plus, uh, and we pick regression here. And new analysis, uh, regression. And so multiple linear regression, uh, we are going to say our dependent again, obviously is current health expenditure. So, um, oh, why is it in three? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so it is in current health expenditure. So that's uh, column D. And then our, um, so independent variables, we are going to say, our gross domestic product and population, and then regions, Americas. Middle East, so we are going to add all these columns 
Okay, um, and then you can run this. Um, so it's going to be taking some time to run it. Let's wait for it. Right. Yeah. So if you look at this uh, variable, um, so it has excluded uh, the Asia Pacific. That means this is your reference variable and all the variables uh, will have to be seen in the light of this variable. So that means that if you um, go to the questions here, so let's close this. And uh, so, yeah, so it excluded Asia Pacific. Interpret the coefficients of these binary region variables in the new regression. Okay, so if you go here, so basically what it means is that holding all else constant, so whenever you look at these variables, um, holding all else constant, uh meaning that if you want to look at the variable coefficient of americas holding all else constant the gdp per capita uh, sorry the he current health expenditure of americas would be 181 dollars higher uh, than asia pacific because this is the reference now uh for all if 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 there are two countries one in uh, asia pacific and one in americas They have the same population. They have the same gross domestic product. The current health expenditure of the country in Americas would be on average $181 higher than Asia Pacific. So this is what the coefficients uh, actually mean. Uh, so holding all else constant, we can expect $181 higher per capita current health compared to a country from Asia Pacific region. If there's absolutely... Same thing in the both countries, like current, like their GDP and population. And similarly, you do it for Middle East. The current expenditure would be four twenty nine dollars higher per capita. For Africa region, it would be lower because we have the coefficient as uh, negative. Sorry, Middle East will also be negative, uh, lower, and then Africa would be lower also, and Europe would be four ninety four dollars higher. Um, so the the Uh, basically the sign of your uh, coefficient will tell you, okay, if it is lower or higher than Asia Pacific. And it also asks you to comment on the uh, overall changes from original regression. So if you look at the R value, this is where you, so our R value has, R squared has increased. So it's now 0.68 uh, compared to the 0.8. Six six. So that means that this model is a a bit better predictor because now the variation in um uh, our uh, dependent variable as sixty eight percent is now explained sixty eight point four percent explained compared to sixty six point one. So this is a better model, a better fit uh compared to the other model, which we would expect because we have added more variables. So we're giving more information, but this is not always true. Sometimes adding variables can also affect. negatively if especially those variables have no impact on your dependent variable so if you are adding variables and you are seeing that r square is going up which this, that means that these are useful variables uh but if you start seeing r square going down that means you know these variables have probably no relation or very less relation so yeah so this is uh, all from uh week uh, 10 in class practice i hope this was helpful and uh just go through it and if you have any questions uh, i'll obviously be going through this in the class also but if you have any questions in the meanwhile just send me an email or join in my office hours and i'd be happy to help you um thank you for seeing this recording and bye